Well, hello. So in this video, we continue our saga of uh, utility closet recordings. But and so I, again, I'm sorry for the um, for the poor audio quality and maybe that this setup doesn't look quite as pretty, but well, we'll do the best we can. Right. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So in this video, we're going to introduce you and teach you everything you need to know actually about the fourth uh, market structure, which is monopolistic competition. Um, during school, you know, normally this doesn't take us very long because the graph is actually the same graph that we've looked at before, um, but there's just some little differences in terms of kind of how they behave. So let's get started. So the first thing um, to know is that monopolistic competition kind of shares some of the characteristics of all of the other different market structures. That's why it's called monopolistic competition, right? It's got some monopolistic, like monopoly-like things, but it's also pretty competitive as well. So there's many firms, but not as many as perfect competition, right? And we'd say that, um, that each has a small market share. Each has small market share. And so they have some price setting ability, but it's really fairly minimal and no barriers to entry in the long run. So unlike a monopoly, right, there aren't barriers, right? So it's relatively easy for someone to start a new business like this. And, and thinking about examples, grocery chains, clothing stores, restaurants, it's not easy, but it's also easier than starting a new water company, right? They also engage in product differentiation. So they're kind of like oligopolies in that way that they do advertising and they do some kind of loyalty programs and, and they'll have the little key chain, key chain things that you're like, oh, scan this and you get rewards points. So they have that kind of thing. They, they'll often try to compete on service and and they'll um, tell you, you know, that they're somehow better if you consume their products or something. So, um, so they'll do this kind of stuff, right? They don't usually engage in collusion. Well, why? Um, why don't they do that? And the simple answer is there's too many firms, right? Too many firms. So there's too many firms for them to collude and form cartels and things like that. Otherwise, they'd be an oligopoly. Okay, so now you kind of know some of the basics, right? They have, they have some of the things in common with, with Monopoly. They have some of the things in common with perfect competition. Let's take a look at the graph. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to advance the slide momentarily, but we'll kind of do this one first, P and Q. And the first thing to know is they have a downward sloping demand curve due to differentiated products. Now, this isn't the same as like in a monopoly where the demand curve was downward sloping because it's the market demand curve, but this is actually because every single one of these businesses has slightly different products, so they have a downward sloping demand for their curve, as opposed to the horizontal line that we saw in perfect competition. They also, because they have this demand curve that's downward sloping, that's the price, they also have this marginal revenue that behaves like this. Now, if this is starting to look familiar, it should. It's, it's basically the same as an artificial monopoly. And so um, we're gonna have an upward sloping marginal cost curve, and that's the firm's supply curve. And um, they are gonna profit maximize at MR equals MC and all that good stuff, right? So that's a nice handy rule. We have Q star, and we know they're gonna price up here on the demand curve. So again, it, the nice thing about this is it's exactly the same as a artificial monopoly. So from a few lessons ago. Now, this is a firm earning profit. So let's go ahead and see this picture on the next slide. Um, whoops, I'm gonna go back just, there we go. Um, if they're earning profit, that means that price is going to be greater than the ATC at Q star. And so we need to have our ATC, if you look in the graph on the left below, we need to have it kind of down here. So hit our minimum, come back up again. And so we find that price is bigger than ATC, right? This is the price. And then we'll draw a little dotted line over. That's the ATC. And so we know that, that then this rectangle, such as it is, it's kind of a cattywampus rectangle, is profit. Um, so we'll make a bigger dot that way. See, whenever there's like a weird situation, you just make a bigger dot, you'll be fine. So that's a firm earning a profit. And let's take a look at what a firm earning loss is. And it's basically move that ATC curve up. So again, kind of P and Q, downward sloping demand that tells us the price, marginal revenue. I'm going to do that Nike swoosh, marginal cost. That's the supply curve. We know they produce at Q star. Sorry, I kind of drew on a little too big there. I should probably have given you more space, but I was trying to fit it into one P star. And for this one, we're saying they're earning a loss. So we know that for this one, price is gonna be less than the ATC at Q star. So again, remembering those profitability conditions can be really helpful for this. So we're gonna draw down, hit the minimum, come back up again, ATC. 
And then, so that's our ATC value, the ATC value. And so we just draw a little loss rectangle. It's just like that. Happy little loss rectangles, like the Bob Ross of, of loss rectangles here. Okay, so this is this is kind of what will happen in the short run. Now, there's some weirdness here, and this is where they share things in common with perfect competition and with Monopoly. Remember, in Monopoly, if they're earning a profit, they're just going to earn a profit forever because that's just Monopoly. There's really high barriers to entry in a Monopoly. But with this, in the long run, there aren't. And so if firms are earning a profit or if firms are losing money, in the long run, other firms are gonna enter or some firms are gonna randomly shut down. And so in the long run, monopolistically competitive firms will earn zero economic profit. So we'd say profit equals zero. Man, my pen is pooping out on me here. So price is gonna equal the ATC. Whoa, we'll see if we can get this pen to survive. I think I told you in a different video, I'm teaching in this utility closet. And so I can't go to my classroom while someone else is in there. Oh boy, I hope you can read that. I, I think you can't. You're a smart group, right? You know, you're pretty smart. You'd be able to connect my little dots here. For some reason, marginal cost is fine. So I'm just gonna need a new pen. All right, so they're gonna produce at MR equals MC. That's we find Q star first. They price up here on the demand curve. That's going to be our P star. And now we'll kind of advance here. We said, I said earlier that, you know, other firms will enter if there's a profit and other firms will lose or will leave the market if they're earning losses. And actually what happens is that demand curve and the marginal revenue curve shift down and shift up depending on basically if there's profits or losses. And what's actually going on, and, and I'm going to explain this for just 30 seconds. Give me 30 seconds is basically if there's profit and other firms start to enter, then this firm's demand curve for its products, right? The demand for its products will decrease. And that might seem a little strange, but what actually happens is that as new firms enter, the customers are like, eh, I don't need to buy it from this particular firm. So this particular firm's demand curve kind of shifts in. And as it kind of decreases, the price comes down and it will continue to happen until we get to this point where it's just tangent like that. It still is gonna hit its minimum at MC and then come back up, right? So note that that point is still the minimum point. And you can see that it is not the same where we have socially optimal. It's not the same, not wave my hair around at you. It is not the same point. It, it's just that it, it's tangent right here. And that's where we get that point where price equals the ATC at Q star. Now, um, so that, that's, that's kind of what this picture looks like. Now, a couple of last things to think about, right? First, monopolistic competition is not allocative efficient. We don't produce where supply and demand, not where supply and demand intercept. And we'd say it's not where price equals marginal cost. And, and you could just look at that and see that like right here, we're not where supply and demand are, right? We're not where supply and demand are. We're not producing the quantity where supply and demand are. So we're not allocative efficient. We, that, that means we have dead weight loss, right? So kind of advance our slide here so you can see what that looks like. Um, get that out of the way. That dead weight loss is in exactly the same spot that it would be before. So, um, so if you want, right, we can just kind of shade that area right in here. Note that I'm not going all the way up to that ATC. This is the dead weight loss. It's in the exact same spot. And we kind of accept that. We don't typically regulate grocery store prices and we don't typically regulate restaurants and things like that because we call it the price of variety, right? So we call it the price of variety. Now, um, now the second reason that they're not efficient is, is in this slide deck as well. And I wanted to show you that to you, that the price is not at the minimum of ATC. So there's two kinds of efficiency, right? You have the allocative, allocative kind, which is that when price equals marginal cost, supply equals demand. And then you have productive efficiency, productive. And that's where price is equal to the minimum of ATC. And these are also not productively efficient, right? Minimum ATC is here. Minimum ATC is here. Notice we are not at that quantity. Minimum ATC is here. We are not at that quantity. And so this is what we sometimes call excess capacity. And it's the same problem that we see in monopolies. Again, we don't terribly worry about it in the case of these kinds of firms because we're like, we like having different kinds of restaurants. So it's okay. The products aren't all identical, right? It's the price of variety. 
So that's what you need to know. In the long run, they basically return to this normal economic profit. So they behave like perfect competition, but they're different from perfect competition because they're not productive or allocative efficient typically. They kind of behave like monopolies in that they have this downward sloping and marginal revenue curve and whatever. But at the same time, they, they return to a long run equilibrium. So there's a little bit of both, right? It's a little mix of both. All right, hopefully this helped you with monopolistic competition. I'll see you next time.